How do these patients present or, or have their lives altered? And what is the spectrum that you see? Is it mild to really bad? Is, is anybody really just sailing along with this and not having any trouble at all? So if you have one normal beta globin gene, you can sail along and be perfectly fine. Okay. So that's, that's what we call the trait. So the only implication for that is on future generations should two people with the trait have a child together. Okay. So they have a mild anemia, very similar to iron deficiency anemia, but not quite iron deficient. They're not iron deficient, so you don't have to treat them for that. They tend for to run low crits, but not critically? Right. It's, it's mild. So a hemoglobin of 10 or 11, and they're able to do everything pretty normally, maybe not run marathons very competitively, but otherwise they do pretty well. And then you have individuals who have both beta globin genes that are abnormal. And then depending on which kind of mutation they have, it, that determines the severity. So there well, then let me ask the obvious question. Let's take the heterozygous population aside and look at the homozygous. Of those, is there within that, I think I, I know the answer because I sort of interrupted you, is there a spectrum even among those? Yes, there's a wide spectrum amongst those. And, th and that depends, again, as Tom said, on the type of mutation. There are some mutations where you are able to produce a little bit of beta globin or a, a moderate amount of beta globin, and then there are other mutations that we call beta zero mutations where you don't make beta globin at all. And those, if you have two beta zero mutations, then you have the most severe form and you're transfusion dependent from infancy onwards. Oh boy. You may have two beta plus mutations and not require transfusions for five, 10, 15, 20 years even. But you do have a moderate anemia and you have a lot of complications related to the ineffective erythropoiesis that, that Nika mentioned and the anemia itself. The thought of my kids being anemic, the thought of my kids needing frequent transfusions is just awful. Um, how do kids deal with that? And what effect does beta thalassemia as you go through your life have on your life in terms of your quality of life? So beta th <clears throat> depending on the severity as you hear, we're sure. talking about transfusion starting at anywhere between six and two months, uh, six months to two years of age. So that mm -hmm. has a significant impact on um, the family, um, having to go in frequently with for transfusions, um, and then as we heard, uh, the iron overload, so having to deal with medications. Um, in the past, we used to have various medications where um, it would be a subcutaneous injection, several hours, so the, the management, um, and now it's much better with oral agents. Um, but it's the frequency of going in. Um, patients are, in, uh, these young babies are very um, medicalized. Um, there's always the question of what future will I have? Many of our older patients now in their 40s and 50s were told that they would never make it past their 12th or 18th birthday, um, and they're doing really well. But it's, that does impact how someone grows and their quality of life, how they adjust uh, through the stages of development, adolescence, young adulthood. It must be terrible. Um, it must be yeah. terrible. I mean, I, I know that, that kids are quite plastic, if you will, and they can get used to a lot, but why should they have to, you know? So this is, this is something that, <coughs> that falls under the spectrum of benign hematology, hematology which, which I would not. absolutely not call it a benign <laughs> disease. Yeah. Oh, I, and it benign, when, you, when you say benign hematology, you mean it's not, it's not cancer. It's not, the, it's it's not, not leukemia. leukemia. It's not a solid or... Yeah, or but the sometimes it's even worse because it's for life. It's lifelong. Uh, if I can comment on that, I want to go back uh, just Whatever to your like. point. Uh, because, uh, um, as Ajit said, there are some countries where the prevalence of carrier is very high. And so the first step uh, which uh, really changed uh, the natural history of this disease is to perform a proper screening of carriers and make the couple aware of the risk of having an affected child. So this is an educational process which is very important, impacting a lot, also because prenatal diagnosis was made available. However, sorry for uh, going back to the point, the natural history of the disease is definitely change. A child who is born now in this era has definitely a completely different uh, uh, perspective compared to one I was starting to deal with this patient in the 70s. Really? I saw child, children dying uh, within the age of 10 with a terrible heart failure, you know, big belly because of splenomegaly. So I saw all the 
history of these patients, and now they look quite well. Nevertheless, nevertheless, they are hospital dependent. Uh, uh, they have a lot of uh, related problems.